Hello, it's a beautiful day outside and a perfect day to go work on your car. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to reverse engineer a vehicle CAN bus or as I say in a cool terms, to hack your car. Um, all you require is some basic CAN knowledge, information about controller area network which is the protocol used by uh, the car companies uh, to, to code their ECU uh, and you need a paper, a pencil and lots of patience. I will walk you through uh, reverse engineering some of the basic signals like what happens when you press a brake, what happens when you press uh, the accelerator pedal, now how would you go ahead and uh, decode where the fuel value lies uh, so that when you start driving the car you know what your MVG is. Uh, all these things are, are very simple and with some basic uh, automotive experience uh, you would be able to hack into any car that you want. This is how a particular CAN message is structured. All the ECUs communicate through this particular ID for this particular CAN message. Then the message has a set length. Uh, the message can be 8 bytes long, it could be 6 bytes long, 7 bytes long. It really depends on the auto manufacturer. Then the third part is the direction, which means whether the message is being transmitted by a particular ECU or it's being received by a particular ECU. Then how often it is received, that's the periodicity. And then every message has a certain set of signals. Each signal then, uh, as we saw earlier, has a start bit uh, that tells where the signal starts and has a length that tells how long the signal is defined. It also has a sign, meaning if the, the signal can take only positive values or negative values uh, or it can take decimal values or only integers, etc. And then there is something called a scale and offset, which means um, how would you convert this raw signal that the ECU transmits uh, to some physical readable English value. All right, this is what I call as a CAN message grid. This grid has eight rows. Each row represents one byte, so there are eight bytes, and each cell represents one bit, so there are 64 bits. That's how a typical CAN message is structured. Now, every manufacturer has a certain way of representing each signal in their CAN message. For example, let's take one signal called break. So this break signal is usually a Boolean signal. So, which means that the brake is pressed or not pressed. So it can take a value of 1 if the brake is pressed and take value of 0 if the brake is not pressed. Now let's assume that this brake is represented at this position. How would you quantify this position? This position is bit number 33 and the length of this bit or the signal is 1. So we say that the start bit of brake signal is 33 and length is 1. Now second signal, uh, let's take pedal. This pedal position goes from say 0% when you're not pressing the accelerator pedal to 100% when you're fully throttling. Now let's say this pedal is represented by this row. So the length is 8 bits long. Or byte long and it starts at bit number 48. A typical auto OEM would define uh, accelerator pedal position in this CAN message with a start bit of 48 and a length of it. This is it. Now let's go in a vehicle and see how actual uh, OEM bus looks like. You can see here that uh, on ID 199 these messages are changing, these signals are, are changing always, uh, regardless of whether I'm pressing the brake or not. So this will not be brake, that's, that's pretty straightforward. Now I'm going to press the brake and let's see what happens. So I press the brake and release it. Press it again, I release it. Nothing really changes. So these, uh, this data which is changing keeps on changing and the other signals uh, which are stationary are not changing, they don't change. So all these IDs uh, we can eliminate because there is no brake signal present on these IDs. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'll again show you, I press the brake and I release the brake, press the brake again, release the brake, 
nothing really happens so uh, I can strike out all these IDs till 41 going forward let's say okay so from 500 through here let's see if anything changes when I press the brake press the brake oh something changed so this bit changed and this bit changed so I can have ID F1 and ID C9 on my list let's see if they again change when I release the brake release the brake okay so ID C9 something changed and ID F1 something changed and then none other others are changing so I do this multiple times and these two bits are changing so there might be a brake signal hidden in either IDC 9 or IDF 1 and then I go further and see if anything more changes I press the brake and release the brake this changed but let's see if it change, changes again when I press the brake it does not so from the entire bus I only get these two IDs C9 and ID F1 that could potentially have a brake signal hidden in, in them okay now we want to focus on uh, ID F1 and ID C9 so I press the brake it changes from 40 to C0 and ID C9 it changes from 40 to 41 now it's time to go on on the paper so I open the calculator and I type in 40 which is uh, ID F1 bit 0 1 2 3 so 40 is nothing but 0 1 0 0 and 0 0 0 0 that's the decimal representation of 40 now let's say if I flip this bit to 1 what happens oh it's C0 so this is this number we are getting when the brake is pressed which is 1100 zero, zero, and 0000 zero, zero, zero. I set it to 0 again I get 40 I set it to 1 I get C0 so really this particular bit might be brake when I press this it goes to C0 which is which is what I'm seeing here and when I release this it goes to 40 which is what I'm seeing here similarly for IDC 9 uh, it's bit 0 1 2 3 4 5 sorry and it's if I flip this bit to 1 it goes to 4 1 that's what I'm seeing here and if I flip this bit to 0 it goes to 4 0 that's what I'm seeing here okay we can do a similar thing similar exercise for the pedal position uh, we can see that these signals are changing here so uh, of course I'm not pressing the pedal right now uh, so they could not be accelerator pedal now let's see what happens when I press the pedal I'm pressing releasing so these two signals change but this changes this keeps on changing even even when the throttle is fully pressed so this may not be accelerator pedal but this guy here um, ID 1 a 1 follows how I'm pressing the pedal so uh, it goes from 0 to FF back to 0 uh, which could be a potential candidate for the pedal let's see if any other things change uh, okay so this particular byte looks like changing when I press the pedal it goes to FE and release it goes to 0 uh, other things are are random so this looks to be a better candidate because it's on IDC 9 and if you remember the brake was also a potential signal on this ID so when I press this brake uh, it goes from 40 to 41 back to 40 when I when I release it the pedal position might be here uh, as compared to on 1A1 because uh, the brake is also here so an auto auto OEM a car manufacturer might keep its pedal position and brake together in one signal so IDC9 looks to be a better candidate for uh, the pedal position uh, than ID1A1 uh, and it goes from 00 to FE back to 00 and brake goes from 40 to 41 back to 40
Okay, so what we saw was um, the pedal position goes from 0 to FF, which means in decimal it's 0 to 255, and that's when you are not on pedal versus when you are fully throttling. So I can, I can assume that 0 uh, represents uh, not on pedal, and 255 represents a full throttle, that is 100% pedal position. So now to convert this 255 uh, or, or this uh, raw value into a final pedal position in percent, you can use the formula raw times a scale plus an offset equals final. Now let's assume that this offset is zero because uh, usually the pedal position is linear. So you get 255 times a scale equals 100 or scale equals 100 over 255. Now this scale you can enter in your DBC and then you can easily convert any particular pedal position into its raw value or vice versa. So if you get a value of say 102 then your final pedal position will be 102 times the scale which is equal to 102 times 100 over 255 percent that's it that's how you convert raw data into um, final value which is which could be represented in English uh, let's go over engine RPM uh, very quickly. Engine RPM is a little bit hard to debug in the sense that you have to keep looking for uh, the bytes that change uh, when the engine is turned on. Uh, now you can see here uh, I keyed on so a bunch of things changed but then it will settle down. Uh, these signals are changing even if the engine is off so these cannot be engine RPM. Now when I start the engine few more signals uh, turn up and you can see these signals are changing this is changing these bytes are changing uh, now let's turn the engine off and see if uh, any of them goes to zero so okay so IDC 9 again uh, these two bytes go to zero when engine is off but none of these other bytes really go to zero so let's try it again i start now it settles down to say d and some number and then when i switch off the engine it slowly goes to zero so again this might be uh could be engine rpm if you see again it's c9 uh, which is a better match I may have more confidence on it because uh, the accelerator pedal is there the brake is there and so why not the engine RPM right uh, all the engine related messages could be in a single can frame uh, for this particular vehicle uh, now how to decode that is uh, a second task so I start the engine it's going to say a value D and something now I can take a freeze frame and then uh, get this value but because the RPM changes quite often these values are not stable these values keep on changing um, I then full throttle and then this value goes to 2D and some value and then back to zero To decode any signal which is changing uh, constantly, uh, we uh, sense its extreme values. So uh, in case of engine RPM, uh, I will see what the idle RPM is, uh, which I can see on the dashboard. I can uh, measure it as around 650 RPM. And then I'll fully throttle uh, and see where the RPM uh, settles down uh, on full throttle. So I'm throttling and the rpm settles down to some 3000 rpm uh, so i keep these two values in mind 
and then see what these numbers look like so this is now 2e and some number say 2e and a5 and then this is 0b and some number uh, it need not be accurate but you get a sense of uh, what the range of rpms is so 0b and some number uh, is a lower range which could be around 650 rpm and uh, 2e and some number would be the higher range uh, which could be around 3000 rpm